So, uh, hello everyone. Um, uh, my name is Robert Varga. I am uh, a fellow at Pantheon Technologies or Pantheon Tech, as it's currently known, uh, and I'm one of the contributors to Open Daylight over the past uh, very many years. Um, I'm here to talk about um, the future of Open Daylight scalability, what it means, what we need to do, what are the challenges, and what are the next steps. So that's very br briefly our, uh, my agenda. Um, I'll start describing this from the past. So Open Daylight got started in 2013, actually. So it's almost 10 years old now. Um, and it kind of shows on, on the architecture and design and implementation side of things. It started off as, a, as your usual big honky Java um, application server, which you would um, install through some installation guide, probably from a, a commercial vendor and on a big honking server, pro, uh, potentially with, with a cluster without any um, external dependencies. And then you would select your use case, potential multi multiple use cases, spin it up, and hopefully it, it would work. Um, this was back in 2013, so um, there was little visibility as to um, what the actual SDN use cases are going to pan out um, to be. Um, so everything was in scope. Um, and also um, the, the requirements as to what it actually constitutes for, um, and, and what are the requirements of individual use cases was not really defined. Um, but yeah, that was exciting as the era. So we had a ton of contributors from a lot of companies, all sorts of um, documentation testers, you, uh, you name it. Um, and the proposition was that you wouldn't really uh, run the open source thing, but you would find an integrator or a commercial distribution and then work with them um, to refine their use case and, and essentially give you something that, that can be uh, supported in a commercial environment. To fulfill feel that, um, the architecture looked like this. So um, on top of, all, we have the usual RESTCOM interface, and uh, then we have a couple of applications like the Deluxe UI. We have ditched that a long time ago because nobody was really using it. Um, there was VTN co coordinator, and then there were a ton of plugins doing things from OVSDB, OpenFlow, PSAP, CapWeb, you name the protocols, and also a ton of applications um, sitting inside that. All of this was expected to essentially run in one JVM or in, in a cluster, but essentially you pick and choose what, what you want to deploy it on this big, uh, big um, honking server. Obviously, um, that's not how you currently deploy applications. Usually you run microservices. So one saving grace uh, that, that we had is that we have this um, MD SAL component, which is really making this not as monolithic at, at, as it would seem, but also, yeah, um, not um, as dis uh, uh, disaggregated at uh, as people um, expect today. So um, with that, we obviously need to move forward, but in order to know what to do, we need to define what our goals are. And when I say scalability, scalability is um, multiple things, uh, really. So it's scalability in performance as in throughput latency and similar things that uh, things that you would expect. Um, just today, I saw a couple of presentations where um, the number of managed endpoints was quoted to be in the millions and tens of millions running across the entire world and working seamlessly. So those are targets that we did not envision. We kind of said that, well, maybe we'll have a 100K managed devices. So obviously, we are looking at a hundred X times that. And all of that, 
usually with low latency, high throughput, as you would expect, and also very, very low footprint. So things like, yeah, I need to run this function on two cores, maybe a gig of memory, and that's it. So we need to also look at how are we going to scale up as well as scale down. Um, the other part of scalability is not just performance, but also deployment, right? Because you are deploying this service or, or rather the solution in a certain way which has evolved wildly since 2013. So we have evolved system management systems where you have building blocks as containers, you have off the shelf um, things like, well, your time series database, your visibility uh, and analytics, all sorts of um, functions that in 2013 you couldn't really get out of the box. You had to build them yourself. They were bespoke and we had a version. So for TSDR we actually had a component. We had um, some integration with analytics and all that. Um, and really today you, you expect to get a package and that package to work across um, a developer's notebook all the way to supporting your, well, entire production environment of hundreds of thousands of devices. So um, we really need to think about how we scale these deployment scenarios uh, with even uh, considering things like certain people have certain preferences for their databases, for their analytics, for all these building blocks, and they probably want to um, combine um, various blocks to, to actually uh, fit their environment and requirements. And obviously, um, it is a requirement to have uh, automatic scale up and scale down of resources so that you don't have your compute resources sitting idly, nor um, should you have uh, problems with, well, CPUs be being overloaded because the, the solution doesn't scale up. Um, another con consideration is scalability of delivery. How do we deliver um, open daylight? Um, and there's differences, right? Because currently we, on our, we have a download site and you have jars and zips and maybe some online documentation and that gets refreshed, well, every half a year or three months or whatever the release cycle ends up being for the um, uh, simultaneous release. But this doesn't really work if you, if you need to um, prototype something in the lab or have a quick turnaround on getting your issues resolved and seeing whether there are no regressions and all that. So this is also part of scaling the project and um, uh, we need to um, think about the, the, the different trade-offs that need to occur there. Um, and obviously, the upgrade process has changed wildly. We currently support in-place upgrades, but that's not really how you run your networks, right? You don't bring it down, um, this big honking um, cluster. You don't schedule maintenance for that. You really do something like a blue-green upgrade, right? You upgrade half of your environment or gradually roll out a new release and expect that to gradually migrate without the service being actually impacted and your users uh, not, um, non, uh, noticing, uh, noticing any, uh, anything is going on. And the final part in scalability is scalability in community, which is having know-how, how, how the code works, how the code is laid out, what sort of problems may crop up where? How do you troubleshoot this system? Uh, what are the best practices in deployment, in configuration, in um, integration with other services, all that. And also, obviously, communication with other projects, 
um, social media, getting a, engagement with users, um, be it developers through Stack Overflow, Slack, and well, really anything else, and also getting engagement with potential end users through marketing and um, cross, cross community and cross industry relationship. And finally, um, part of community is also the ownership of the individual use cases, of which there are quite a few. Um, uh, their documentation and the code that, that supports them. So we need to tackle essentially all these things and, and think about them when we think, how does Open Daylight scale? So with that, um, about a year ago, uh, there was a presentation as to how do we evolve the architecture. Um, and the thing is, essentially we have one very major use case, which is the net conference translation, which is essentially a, a stateless service, except you need to route it and have some sort of consistency. So this is just a slide uh, from, from that presentation. I will not go into uh, the details very much. Uh, suffice to say that essentially we have disaggregated um, things. Each of these blocks can be made a single container or really a service which can be scaled up or scaled down and everything is connected um, th through a something like a message bus and or a request broker. Um, which again is central and it kind of replaces MDSAL except it doesn't, it's um, the, the glue um, to connect those services in a microservice world. In terms of uh, deployment, yeah, there's a de facto uh, orchestration platform which everybody supports. So rather than building our own um, of various ways of packaging and, and delivery and managing uh, the runtime environment, et cetera, et cetera. We really need to embrace Kubernetes and um, rely on the services and the building blocks available in that ecosystem rather than trying to spin our own where existing solutions already provide that. Um, the benefit of that is that we can focus on the core use cases that we do and the, the things that are really value add rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and uh, have, well, things like the ACA distributed data store which few can, can understand and uh, even fewer can deploy. Um, so that is the, the path to actually getting this deployed without too much trouble. Um, on the delivery side of things, um, we really need to think about our packaging and messaging around that. Because today everybody expects Docker images, maybe Helm charts, um, and a quick start documentation to get you started, um, and unified integration with essentially Kubernetes without having bespoke tools just use off the shelf things that everybody knows. Um, and that's the way to interact with um, operations people because they're used to a certain tool set. We need to in, uh, embrace that and not force them to learn more than they need, really need to learn. And finally, uh, we need to have automated releases. So if a page goes in, it shouldn't take more than, say, 24 hours, um, after which a packaged use case gets out and is published to whatever um, repositories uh, ne it needs to hit so that it can be easily consumed, tested, and deployed in, even in production without having to wait for a sign-off for three to six weeks or whatever it takes uh, under our um, current processes. Um, next up, obviously, uh, we need to do a lot of work in our community. 
there are a lot of vacancies coming from, um, so in terms of documentation writers, uh, CSI team, maintainers, uh, all, all those things. And also communication, obviously, because yeah, we have been struggling with even getting our Twitter online for a couple of years. That may be moot at this point, but anyway, we <laughs> need to take ownership of our, of our media so that it's driven by the community and it's really driven, driven by um, each use case's owner so that we properly channel um, the potential user so that they can engage directly with the, the community members who support a particular use case so that they can provide that support directly rather than shooting an email to whatever mailing list and hoping that, yeah, somebody will answer it, probably misfiring it and misdiagnosing the error. Somebody who knows the use case, knows how to deploy it and operate it, can, can guide them to a successful deployment much faster than just a mailing list or, or something like that. Um, and we obviously need to um, give more tools to our communities. So um, GitHub should be an option, GitLab should be an option, um, GitHub Actions, you name it. Um, as a community, we don't really care about those tools as long as we can deliver the use cases um, and the solutions to our, to our users. So improving this and decentralizing really how we work um, is critical here. Okay, so um, out of that, there's a couple of next steps we need to take, um, which is essentially defining what are the use cases that we still support out of this, uh, that myriad of, I don't know, 50 to 60 use cases, um, there's probably something like three to five which are really left and are well, well enough known and well, well enough supported. We need to um, obviously document them and then start packaging them and, and thinking about, well, getting our entire release process to support that. Also streamline Open Daylight Org because currently if you go to Open Daylight Org and you know that you want to deploy a use case, actually getting to the documentation as to how to do that and getting to the artifacts to do that is going to take you half an hour, no problem. Um, I've tried it and it takes something like 15 clicks, even if I know what I'm going for. So like even you, you go for to use cases and like it takes something like four clicks to do that and then you have this bunch of stale links to commercial vendors, nothing that would mention Docker Compose or anything that would get you started really quickly. We need to um, rework that and, and make it really smooth to deploy and get in contact with people who can help you to get this deployed up and running really quickly. And obviously we need to improve on the cross-community uh, cross collaboration bit, which is essentially getting in touch with the various um, downstream users, um, the primary of which is obviously ONAP. Uh, we've been having some monthly meetings, but we certainly can improve. And um, improving that end-to-end -end experience is going to go a long way to um, solve our problems, so yeah. That's um, essentially all I have. Um, and we, we obviously are uh, looking for engagement and people interested in getting this off the ground. And with that, I will go to Q&A. Thank you. Any questions, answers, anything? The slides, yeah, I wanted to do 
to put them on schedule, but yeah, I mess, messed up my emails, so I didn't. But but yeah, sure, we will. We'll. And uh, you made a really good point that we're pretty close to the, the 10 year mark. So yep. Okay, that, that's a good point. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll be here and a couple of other community members through the D DTF so we can brainstorm that. There's a couple of topics. Yeah, like yep. Yep. Yeah. We still have a couple of months, right? So it's March something, I think, second when we were announced. I'm not sure. That sounds right. Say that sounds right. Yeah. All right. So if there, there's no other questions, yeah, cookies. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll give you back 10 minutes. <laughs>